Welcome to the second of our three-part installment, taking an introductory look at sensing. In this lesson, we'll dive deeper into the sensor metrics uh, that are of interest for sensors used in mechatronic systems. Let's begin with sensitivity. Sensitivity uh, describes the relationship between the output signal, which is typically electrical, and the physical input. And the sensitivity is often described as a ratio of the change in output uh, relative to the change in input. So you might see something like ohms per lux or uh, volts per uh, meter per second squared. And this would be typical of an uh, accelerometer. Let's take a look at this graphically. So on my um, x-axis here, I have sensor input, and on my y-axis, I have sensor output. And my sensitivity, uh, written as k typically, uh, my sensitivity k will effectively be the slope of that curve. The curve I've drawn here is nonlinear, and it is often the case that sensors will have a nonlinear regime in which they're operating. So in terms of defining sensitivity, we need to look at a specific sensor input. So at some input, I'll call that in one, um, I'll have a sensitivity of my uh, sensor that'll be defined by the slope at that point in one. So this point here would be K at sensor input one. At a different sensor input, let's call that in two, I'll have a, a different sensitivity because I have a different slope of my curve. And in this case, my sensitivity, k at uh, input two, um, that's much higher. The slope of the curve at input two is much higher than the slope of the curve at input one. So even though the performance of my sensor in terms of sensitivity might be nonlinear over a, a large range, um, over a small input range, we, we can approximate it as effectively uh, linear, and then we can draw the sensitivity as we see here in our red uh, straight lines, over a very small uh, sensor input range. And so the range, we need to define them. So the range will be defined as the range of physical signals that can be converted to outputs by the sensor. And oftentimes we're referring to an input range. So R in, uh, my input range, is defined as the maximum input signal that we can measure minus the minimum input signal that can be measured by the sensor. You might see this on a data sheet. Um, it's often written as full scale operating range or FSO. And in the case where we have a particularly large range, um, the range is often defined in terms of dBs. So here, that range in decibels, that'll be 20 times log to the base 10 of uh, the maximum input signal divided by the uh, minimum input signal. The accuracy of your sensor, that's going to be described as the largest expected error between the measured signal and the true signal. So the error E, that'll be the measured value minus the true value. And typically, we're taking uh, multiple measured values and comparing that to the truth. So there is some statistical nature uh, to this error. On a data sheet, you might see um, the accuracy relative to the full-scale operating range, relative to the FSO. So for example, let's say you saw that the accuracy on the data sheet was defined um, as 1% uh, FSO. And if you knew uh, from elsewhere on that same data sheet um, that the FSO was 0 to 100 degrees C, let's say this is a temperature sensor, then I would expect my accuracy, or that largest expected error, to be plus or minus 1 degrees C. Now, precision and accuracy, these are two terms that are often confused. Precision refers to, uh, it's a measure of a sensor's ability to give the same output, over multiple measurements of a given input. You can also think of precision as reproducibility of a sensor. And you know, a, sort of a traditional way of explaining accuracy and precision is to, um, to look at this uh, target example. And let's take a look at this example. Um, let's animate this in MATLAB. So here I am in MATLAB, and I've written a chunk of code to simulate this, uh, this concept of accuracy versus precision. And what we're going to do here is we're going to throw 10 darts uh, at a dartboard uh, with a bullseye in red. And we're going to do uh, 10 darts for each of three different cases. So let's go ahead and run that code. So at left here, I'm going to throw 10 darts, and you'll notice the, uh, all of the darts are roughly centered about the bullseye. However, the uh, spread of the darts is also relatively small. They're actually all pretty much within this first ring. 
So this is what's known as um, a sensor, to use the analogy, that is both accurate and precise. So the accuracy means the, the average, let's call it, of all these darts is roughly uh, in the center, and the, the precision, the spread of these uh, lo dart locations is relatively small. Now at right, I've thrown 10 more darts at, uh, at the same board, and you'll notice now um, all of the darts are falling roughly, you know, about the same location, the, the sort of average uh, location here. Um, but that average location is significantly far away from the bullseye. Okay, so this is this is uh, analog analogous to a sensor that is um, not very accurate, but rather precise. You'll notice the spread of the target locations is is relatively small. So this sensor will be not accurate, uh, but but rather precise. And here at right, uh, my third target, I've now thrown 10 more darts. Um, and you'll notice the average of the dart locations is still, still relatively close to the bullseye, I'd say somewhere within this first ring. Um, however, compared to the second dartboard, the spread is significantly larger, right? The spread of my uh, dart locations where they've landed. So this would be a, uh, analogous for a sensor that's quite accurate, um, but not precise. So let's run that one more time and take a look at these three cases. At left here, we have accurate and precise. At right, we have a, a, an analogy for a sensor that's not accurate, but very precise. Um, and then case three here, we have an analogy of a sensor that is accurate, but not precise. And so it's important then uh, that, that we properly understand um, and digest the difference between accuracy and precision uh, when evaluating sensor metrics. Now something that can often cause uh, a lot of problems in your measurement and the performance of your system is noise. And noise is any part of the signal that's not due to the measure and. Now granted, there's lots of different types of noise that you might encounter, but let's first consider a noise-free signal. So uh, at left here, um, I have a sine wave. I'm looking at one period of the sine wave, and there's no noise on this signal. So this might describe the true measure and that I'm attempting uh, to, to sense, that I'm attempting to measure. Now, one case of noise might be something that's fairly um, deterministic, right? So this might be, uh, a, say, a periodic signal um, induced by some electromagnetic radiation, right? So often you'll see in the lab uh, the presence of a 60 hertz signal, and that's uh, basically your device operating as an antenna and picking up uh, EMI noise off the wall. And so the red signal here, that, that's actually what I would measure, right? This has the uh, measure and component of the signal, the true signal that I'm looking for, as well as the noise component on top of that. Now, it's more often the case that the noise you'll encounter in your mechatronic system, that'll actually be random noise. For example, maybe I have, uh, as I see here, some sort of white noise that is superimposed upon my signal. And so the question you're probably asking yourself is, you know, well, what do I do about these, uh, this uh, existence, this presence of these noise signals? Um, and we'll actually take a, a deeper look at that in a later uh, lecture in the semester. Uh, but certainly as you're trying to measure a measure and, right, that is a smaller and smaller amplitude, you're going to need to pay more and more attention to the presence of noise and how we would deal with that, how we would say filter that out. Resolution of your sensor, that's going to be different than the resolution of your analog to digital converter that we discussed previously. The resolution of a sensor is defined as the minimum detectable change in the measure and. Thus, resolution will be defined in units of the measure and. Let's consider an analog sensor um, and I have no input going into that sensor. For example, an accelerometer that's just sitting still on a table. I'll have then some level of noise that I'm measuring at the output. And the amplitude of this noise, uh, that'll refer to the noise floor of my sensor. And so we can define resolution um, as the ratio of this noise divided by the sensitivity. And what we see here is that noise is in output units and sensitivity is the ratio of that output over input. So those output units cancel and the resolution will be in units of the input. A good rule of thumb to use uh, in terms of the resolution of a sensor um, is that the minimum detectable output is typically about three times the noise floor. And finally, let's consider the bandwidth of a sensor. So the bandwidth of a sensor is the range of frequencies over which the sensor operates. 
You may have seen an amplitude frequency plot uh, of this nature before. So for example, if I have a sinusoidal input to my sensor, I'm looking at how that amplitude changes uh, with respect to a change in frequency. So from here, I could define a point um, at which the um, amplitude is still worth uh, examining, still worth looking at, and that'll define the bandwidth of my sensor. Now we will still get some output even at higher and higher frequencies, but what this plot is telling me is that the amplitude of these high frequency signals is decreasing to a point that they're effectively negligible. 